Welcome once again to worship this morning on this third Sunday of Advent. And if you are with us online, thank you for being with us. You are an important part of our community here at Christ Venice. So on the third Sunday of Advent, we are going to be talking about joy and the joy of the Lord. Now, our guiding symbol this Advent has been the Star of Bethlehem. That the star that shone 2,000 years ago that helped the wise men move toward the direction of the Savior. And so today, that star guides us on our journey of joy as we strive to find the true meaning of the joy of the Lord. Our Savior over 2,000 years ago came into this world. And when He did, we, had some, we were gifted some of the most precious gifts. We've talked about hope. We've talked about the love of the Lord, and today we're going to talk about the joy of the Lord. You know, joy is very fascinating. It's, it's often, though, misunderstood. It's, it's often confused with happiness. You know, it's, it's one of those things um, in my clinical practice, I have a lot of folks that would come in and tell me, you know, John, I'm happy, but I'm not joyful. And you see, joy is, is very different than happiness. And I think one of the things you're going to find today through the scriptures and through our time together, that when you have joy in your heart, it takes it to the next level. Because where there is joy, the Holy Spirit is there inside that joy. Now, if we look to the Bible, have you ever noticed that every time an angel shows up in scripture... The first words out of the angels' mouths are, do not be, yeah, do not be afraid. It's so common, and, and obviously, uh, you know, it's over and over and over again as we read the scriptures. So I kind of think like, do not be afraid is like the heavenly language for hello, okay? Yeah, it's kind of like the first day I showed up here in the office and I looked at everybody and they're looking at me and they're going, you're not Pastor Mike, who are you? And I wanted to say, do not be afraid. But, <laughs> but you know, those shepherds in those days, um, they, you know, they were, when you think about it, they were these rugged men. They were manly men. I mean, they're not used to, they were used to hard work and they're used to protection and, 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 and hurting the sheep and, and doing all that comes with that. And there was strength in numbers. And then, then this angel shows up and, and we're told that it says, do not be afraid. And we are told that the shepherds, as manly as they were, fell to their knees. Weak at the feet. Let's go back into that scripture of Luke 2. An angel of the Lord appeared to them and the glory of the Lord shone around them. I wonder what that was like, the glory of the Lord. Have you ever had the glory of the Lord shine around you? I hope you have, because it's an incredible, incredible experience. And we're told, and they were terrified. Now, they weren't scared, they were terrified. They were terrified, and the angels say that word, do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy. For all people. And we hear that prophecy fulfilled that you're going to find this baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. You know, the good news for the shepherds of joy that day was, was, was great joy for all people. And then we're told that the angels come with this big birth announcement. But first they have to kind of tend to the fear in order to experience the joy and then we're told that once they do that, look what happens. And then suddenly, a great company of heaven, of hosts, appeared with the angel, praising God and saying these words, Glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth with whom his favor rests. You see, sometimes we have to calm our fears in order to, 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 to experience this joy of the Lord. Now, there's some things that, that I think that, that, that as we want to experience this journey of joy, some things we have to first of all look at. And the first one is this. There is a relationship in this world between joy and pain. We're going to unpack that in a little bit. You know, one of my favorite, favorite missions is a mission that gives clean water to people who don't have clean water. 
um, countries that, you know, clean water and things like that are, are a scarcity. And, and it's a staggering thing that, that there are millions and millions of people that die each year from not having clean, clean water to drink. Kind of is at my heart. I, I, you know, we're, we just take clean water for granted, don't we? I mean, I was in the airport dr- flying down here when I was moving down here, and I went and I thought, I want to have, I want to have some water. You know, I'm thirsty. So I go to the place, and I get a bottle of water, and the lady says, four ninety nine. I remember the days where you, you got your water from the tap, right? But, but anyway, you know, I think that the, the thing about it is, is that what, what I noticed about the, these missions where we have clean water to people is that there's joy on their face when they get this clean drinking water. And I think, wow, you know, what it, what's something we just take advantage of or take, you know, we just don't understand that there are people in this world that don't have that basic need. And so... Clean water brings health and safety and an opportunity. But the one thing that really impresses me about watching their faces is this, is that they get clean water, but everything else in their life stays the same. They have the same hardships, the same trials, the same living conditions, but because they're getting that that clean water, they're joyful. They're joyful. And it's a strange thing about joy. You know, I think sometimes we think that in order to experience that, pain has to be removed. But the truth is this, folks. In in our fallen world, in in a world where sin exists and and difficulties and pain exists, there's, there's really no way to separate joy and pain. But I think that the one thing that I think that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit puts upon us is that even in periods of pain, God's joy comes in and and transforms us. And those words come into our hearts and our souls, do not be afraid. So today on this journey, I ask you, what circumstances in your life right now are causing you fear? Where is there pain of life seeming to Maybe overshadow joy in your life. And, and have you ever, can you remember a time when you felt like maybe things were just spinning out of control? And if you're there now, and if you're not there now, we just need to realize one thing. That those are the places where the Spirit of God, where the angels' words, do not be afraid. You don't have to fear. There is good news of great joy for all people. Now, in the book of the Bible, James says this about joy, and I think it's, it's let's, let's kind of d- delve into this a little bit. He says, consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith is going to produce perseverance. And then he says, let perseverance finish its work, so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. Consider it pure joy. Really? Facing trials is pure joy? I mean, doesn't that sound kind of contradictory? Is it a suggestion when we've heard fake it till you make it? No, it's this. And this is, this is, this is, I think it's an encouragement that even in the midst of hardships, there is a longer, broader view, a perspective that shows us that our trials can lead us to grow and become mature in our faith. And while it isn't easy, it's filled with joy. And, and as we do so, we can walk in relationship to one another. Because there's a deep, deep reality at work. There's an unseen source of life that's flowing in and through us. Now, let's talk about joy and how joy gets manifested. So we know we live in this world, and we know that there's going to be things that are going to weigh us down, or, or sin is going to weigh on, or, and, 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 and that are going to make us unhappy. But we know that joy and pain coexist, but the joy of the Lord is something that can encapsulate us. So joy and connection. 
So remember when I had that picture up there of, of people in clean waters and, and, and that project? I'm going to tell you, every one of those mission pictures that I've seen, that, that no one in this pictures are alone. I mean, every photo that I've seen from that country, there's always groups of people together. And, and, and I think about what I told you about, you know, with, with uh, uh, you know, their joys and their concerns and their hardship, those stay the same, okay? But yet they're together and they're happy. And, and, and so the same through, is true about the good news of Jesus Christ and Christmas, because what he says what the angel says to the shepherds is a joy is for all people. And so part of what we do as Christians this season and in our lives is connect with other people. In fact, the coming of Jesus and the promise of his second coming at the day are all a source of joy for all creation. Jesus came to set things right and redeem the entire world from sin and death. And the good news isn't just for the shepherds. The good news isn't just for Christians. The good news isn't just for Americans. The good news isn't just for people that are similar to us. The good news, we're told, is for all people. And so part of our journey of joy in the Lord is introducing Jesus Christ to those who don't know him. Introducing him to those who need his love and his care and his touch. Because this joy is uncontainable and uncontained. Reminds me of Psalm 96 when, when the, in the psalmist way back talks about the joy in the Lord. And, and he says this about joy. He says, let heaven rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the seas resound. Let all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant. And everything in them, let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord when he comes. Let's, let's read that together. I mean, let's really kind of read that psalm. Read with me. Let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound in all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. Let all creation rejoice before the Lord, for He comes. You see, folks? Yes. Absolutely. You see, fear and pain will isolate us, but joy brings connection. Like I told the kids today about Dr. Seuss, what, what, a, what a great example, I guess, you know, is, this, is that, that you can take away all these decorations today. You could take away all the presents under the tree, but if we're together in the house of the Lord, holding each other's hands, praying together, the joy of the Lord will always be with us. The joy of Christmas will always be in our hearts. And so... What is our response to this joy? Well, let's talk about joy in worship. What do we do when, when those situations happen in our lives? They just kind of come crashing in, and then all of a sudden, you know, we're, we're faced with maybe some unbearable pain or, or things that just happen and or occur. And sometimes it's times like that we, we, we have a trouble embracing joy and all of a sudden, you know what that's like, all of a sudden all the fears come up. And, and so joy can far, be far away and, and so distant. But the Bible shows us that the appropriate response to joy or pain is worship, is worship. To know that we worship, when we worship God, we know that as much as out of control as things could be, that we have a God that is always in control. That we have a God who is always going to guard our hearts, even when we're having trouble doing it ourselves. You see, that's the joy of the Lord. I can't tell you how many people I meet on a, on a daily basis that have been through some really difficult things. Especially this time of year, I hear lots of stories about people who've lost loved ones or are in the middle of a terminal diagnosis. And, 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 and you know what just amazes me is, is that 
they'll tell me, and these, these are good Christian people, and they'll tell me, even though I'm walking through this dark valley, I feel like the Lord is with me. And, and I, see, I see this look of joy in their face, and, and, and it's, it's, it's interesting because even though we have to walk through dark times, difficult times, Jesus gives us this joy to do so, knowing that, that, that this is only temporary here, that sin doesn't have the hold over us sometimes that we think it has, and that, that, that eventually we're going to be in that second coming and, and, and the joy of, of, of that. Now, when I talk about worship, I mean, we go back to Christmas and look what the shepherds did. I mean, after they got over their fear and they went, they bowed down and worship. In Matthew 2, 10 to 11, we, we see that when the wise men saw the star, the word the scripture uses is they were overjoyed. And, and, and they bowed down and worshipped him. Think about that for a minute. What might have that looked like? What might have that looked like? Just being in worship, in praise of, of the Lord Jesus. You know, we can expect the same experience this Advent season. And, and, and I believe it's this. If there's one thing I want you to take with you today is this. Is that, that you have such a gift in the joy of the Lord. But you can't leave it here. You've got to go, and, and I believe God wants us, wants us to go out and, and talk to people this Christmas season about the joy of the Lord. And he's challenging us. He's saying, don't just do it to fellow Christians. Do it to people that, that you see that need the Lord. And, 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 and I think Peter, in 1 Peter, gave us this this. this Thing about walking in faith with joy, and he, said, he gives us these words of encouragement. He says this, he says, though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you don't see him now, you believe in him and are filled with inexpressible and glorious joy for you are receiving the end results of your faith. And here's the clincher, the salvation of our souls. And maybe you're sitting here thinking today, you know, Pastor, I'm not really experiencing that joy right now. And I would say, we're all get, we all get at that, at that time sometimes. So I'm going to give you three things to take with you to experience joy on a daily basis, even in the midst of pain. The first thing is this one, is folks, connect with others. You know, just like the, the angels kind of got everybody rallied together and, 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 and there was this, this spark of joy, one of the things we have to do is we have to continue to connect together. So being here at worship, whether you're here in person, whether you're here online, this is so important that we're just together and, and we, we feed on the Word of God together and, and, and we, we, we affirm each other in our daily walk. That's a great thing. We saw that in the story of the Grinch, didn't we? Just what that togetherness did. So, so let's connect with each other. The second thing I would say is this, is that, that we have to always keep an attitude of gratitude. We always have to be thankful. You know, there are so many things that God has given us that when we turn our, our suffering and our pain sometimes into gratitude for the things that we have, for the things that we are, it makes a tremendous difference. And that's how... We experience joy. I think about those, those young children in those countries and, 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 you know, they can focus on all the other things that are wrong, but for that time and that moment, the joy of that, that fresh water is, is, is just so amazing. Got an opportunity this week to go down to the breakfast church down that we have at the train station. You want to talk about sheer joy? And I just kept thinking, this is just an amazing ministry to have in our church that, that for an hour on Friday, we're giving people that are having lots of hardships, probably their lives aren't going to change very much, but for that hour, we give them time to worship, we give them a meal. You see, that's the joy of the Lord. That's the joy of the Lord. 
And third and, and final, we have to remember that this is, we have to remember to worship God and to remember her, to worship God for who he is. His love is eternal. He's faithful. He doesn't change, does he? He's there. He's that constant. And his goodness and mercy run out. Never, never. You know, I wonder how far we are from that joy of Bethlehem. I don't think we're that far from it because, see, here's the, here's, we can experience that same joy because if in our hearts we worship him, we're not that far from Bethlehem. In our hearts, if we worship him, we put ourselves in his presence we're not that far from Bethlehem. I asked our sister Amy here if she would share that song with us from Point of Grace. Not that far from Bethlehem. Underneath the stars just a simple man and wife somewhere in the dark. His words cut the silent night. Take my hand for the child that you carry is God's own. And though it seems the road is long, we're not that far from
God, you remind us that we're not that far to Bethlehem. We're not that far from Bethlehem. We have that same joy, that same faithfulness, that same love. And Father, now as we prepare to leave worship today, we pray, Lord, you would take us into this world that we may share the joy with all people as the angel commanded. Father, we thank you for the opportunity to be here today to worship together. Bless us now as we go in our time of ending praise.